We got James Harden in that beard of his. Look, this guy's relentless. We know he's gonna attack the basket all night long. So I'm gonna make it my personal mission to keep that from happening. As long as we keep jumping those passing lanes, we can give them a run for their money. I know I'll be ready. Chicago. Well, it was the Chicago Bulls winning their last game against the Magic in Orlando. And believe it or not, it wasn't the stars that led the charge for them in that win. It, it was about the role players. I mean, the guys who they don't usually count on for the lion's share of their points came through. Guys, simply a complete team performance and road wins where everybody contributes really can galvanize a team and bring it together. Now a chance, courtesy of Gatorade, all fueled up and ready to go. The starting five on the floor. So on the floor for Houston. Moda Yunus and Howard, the post pair. Harden and Ariza filling out the perimeter. And it's Lawson in at the one. Here's Howard, flanketed by the D. He fights to the rim for the layup. Howard's got the opening bucket of the night here for the Rockets. Rose dishes to the... Rockets trail by five. And the Rockets have lost out on some free agent wars the past few years. They have remained competitive, but you wonder what could have been if they landed or kept some of those big names. A quick check now. The 2K interval in the league's best rebounders at the two-guard slot since the All-Star break. James Harden is second. on that list can it can be a major X factor for you Terrence Jones has checked in for the Rockets Patrick Beverly comes in for Ty Lawson here's Freak he averages about uh, five points a game and with the Rockets it's no secret that they take a very analytical approach to team building uh, Greg you and I've talked about that and Clark you know you wonder if that Puts them in free agency. Well, you know, when your front office makes no qualms about viewing players as simply just assets, it can be a hard sell to a free agent. Here's Beverly following the basket by Freak. Beverly with the ball. Now defended by Freak. Beverly with the ball. Looking at his point production, he averages almost eight points a game. And Miritich kicks to Gasol. Butler. And that one off the back of the rim and in. And a chance to catch up on some numbers here. The hustle stats for the Bulls. Well, I think the defensive aggressiveness on display here has caught him off guard. Playing airtight defense and coming up with the steal. And also, how about how well they defended the rim? Not just blocking shots, but also altering them here in this first half. Now here's Butler. Harden missing his last shot. Seven-foot shot. It's tipped. And here's Beverly. Quiet so far offensively, searching for his first points of the game. Howard up on top, defended by Gibson. Harden against Butler. Harden draws the double. Two on the clock. Howard. Another miss by Houston. Rebounding is going to be the focal point for them in this one, fellas. I can feel it. No, it always is, and it has been so far, and they've gotten a nice edge on the glass. Butler on the wing. There's the pick. He kicks to Freak. Let's it go from the wing. No good off the front iron. Rockets trail by six. Here's Beverly. So he gets the whistle. Contact on the way up, and two shots coming up. 
And guys, Patrick Beverly, a, a perfect fit for the Rockets alongside James Harden. You know, Beverly is he's in that complimentary role as a three and D guy. And, and remember, also, even though he's the point guard, he doesn't need the ball to be effective. He's good at just spotting up for threes, and, and he's a hounding on-ball defender. And the Bulls making a change here. Brooks checked in. Brewer is checked in for Houston. Freak sets a screen for Butler. And the three off target. And no excuse there for missing that one after being freed up by a great pick. Yeah, I agree with you. I mean, they came away empty, but they got the look they wanted. And really, I, I've enjoyed, I like the movement and communication there. Al Harden, after Jimmy Butler missed from long range. Brewer, good. Assist from James Harden. 56 seconds left to play in the first quarter. Now here's Freak, defended by Beverly. Miritich, a screen on Beverly. Freak kicks to Miritich. It's rebounded by Houston. They defeated the Pelicans in their last game. And how about the game plan that was constructed for that one? I mean, it was apparent how powerless the D was to stop it. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. I mean, they just didn't have an answer for anything they threw at them. Yeah, they got that one, but early on, it's it's really been a struggle for them to secure that defensive backboard. And because it's still early, I wouldn't read too much into it. There's still a lot of game left. Now here's Brooks. He hasn't yet put up any points in this one. That drops. Yeah, and when you've got a big man who can shoot from distance like that, what a huge advantage. Harden outside. And he can't answer back. The three-pointer offline. And that does it for the first quarter. Bulls lead by six. And we'll get things started in the second quarter when we return. Head coach Kevin McHale spent some time with us in the broadcast booth, but he said it just wasn't the same. He, he missed that competition. When you don't have a dog in, in the fight, it's different to watch a game and not really care who wins or loses. Since I've been a 12-year-old kid, I've been on a team, whether it was my high school team, my college team, my NBA team. And, you know, when the game ends and you go, oh, good game, you high-five the guy you do the game with, and, you know, you're done. That's an interesting perspective on competitiveness and what happens when you're no longer in the thick of it, especially, Clark, when you're as physical a player as Mikhail. Yeah, you know, I certainly understand where he's coming from. I mean, I'm living it in many ways, but for me, it's about the love of the game and sharing that with so many other people who love the same things I do, whether they ever played or not. There's some common ground even outside of the competitive court. And Buenas Noches basketball fans, it's Latin night here on 2K Sports. And you might have noticed the custom jerseys worn by the players. And guys, what's your take on the Bulls so far? A lot of tough D being played by them so far. It's been the difference maker. Greg, no uncontent. So Chicago ends up going with the new group. Houston with a big group substitution here. Howard's checked in for Jones. Riza comes in for Corey Brewer. James Harden, he's checked in for Marcus Thornton. And it's Patrick Beverly in for Ty Lawson. Howard kicks to Harden. Another miss by Harden. And the rebound battle split evenly thus far. Yeah, tit for tat on the glass. Just one more aspect of what's been a very closely contested ball game here. Beverly against Butler. Clock at four. Freak passes to Miritich. That one's a miss. His third shot of the game, he's made one of them. Houston's gotten into trouble with the three ball in the second quarter, only hitting one of five attempts. And Beverly kicks to Howard. And fouled hard that time. He'll get to the line and shoot two. Last season was difficult for Dwight Howard, to say the least, across the board. Worse since, in fact, his rookie year. Yeah, he just wasn't able to stay healthy. I mean, looks dominant in spurts. Gets you thinking, okay, he's back, man. His body betrays him. 
and talking about how it always a perennial double doubles leader. Last year, through the injuries, he dropped down to 23 total double doubles, but that was in only 41 games. So the average over an 82 game stretch would have put him in the top five once again. So clearly, he has a lot left when he's healthy. So he makes one of two as the second one misses. Getting back to Dwight Howard, I think he's at a crossroads physically. Had back and knee issues. It's highly unlikely he can be 100% for a full season. You just hope to have him happy and healthy for your most important game. Shots good from Butler. You can't afford to get him that kind of a look. Well, you know, he came off a good screen, but still, as a defender, you've got to do a better job of fighting over and through that. And Beverly kicks to Montiunas. He sinks the 11-footer. Montiunas has got eight. We've got 128 left in the second quarter. Butler on the way. And it's blocked. Here's Beverly. The pass to Harden. And uh, 101 left in the first half of the game. Howard gets to Beverly from past the arc, and that comes off the assist by Dwight Howard. And now a three-point rocket lead. Really good job there. That's the definition of the inside-out game. Miritich, the screen. Gonna foul on the shot. He'll go to the stripe for two. That's on Dwight Howard. And really the defense fouling there to prevent the layup, but that's exactly what you need to do. It is. I mean, no reason to back off and give him the layup. I mean, much better off making him go to the line. The Bulls shooting their first free throws here for the night. The Bulls, two shots. He misses the free throw. And the second free throw, good. Houston's gotten cold from deep in the second quarter, just two of six from long range. Money in his kicks to Beverly. Here's Harden. Miracic grabs the miss. He still hasn't been able to convert from the field. He's just struggling to find his shot. It's nine seconds separating the shot clock and game clock. From the top of the key, and free. Gets it to go on the assist by Butler. Freaks got it all tied up now for the Bulls. Rocket shooting 53% in the second quarter. Good ball movement yielding good looks. Harden outside. The three. No good on the buzzer beater. It's all tied in Chicago. And now let's catch up with Doris Burke, who's standing by on the sideline. Doris? Thank you, Kevin. Dwight, what's your assessment of the team you're playing here tonight? They're a tough team. You know, they play hard, they play together, they move the ball, and uh, they, they know how to play uh, within the offense, you know. And uh, we've been doing a better job on the defense again, and I think tonight we came out with the right mentality. We just got to keep it up. Dwight, thank you. They know they've got their hands full, Kevin. Thanks, Doris, and we'll be back shortly following halftime to get the third quarter started. Listen up, everybody. 
The second half doesn't have to be as close as the first if we pay attention to a couple of things. The first thing is that we've done nice work immediately attacking whenever they force the turnover. That approach has to stay the same in half number two because the points are never going to come any simpler than that. I'll give you a compliment though. The ball movement's been excellent. Love how many buckets we're getting off assists. The pace of the game, just to bring that up real quick, isn't a huge concern because I think we're suited to play at any speed, but somewhere in the middle of the tempo spectrum would probably be ideal. And that's all I wanted to go over with you. Let's go play a good half of basketball. Well, both sides have assessed what they need to do over the break in halftime. We'll see now if one can pull out away here in the third. We've seen Ty Lawson really having a great game. And he just went off in those first two quarters, guys. He's capable of doing that on a consistent basis as well. So we might see some changes from a defensive standpoint as they try to disrupt his rhythm in the second half. You know, guys, I think you've got to make some sort of change. I mean, they can't let him continue to torch him up like he has been. And Chicago has possession. Next up on the docket, the Bucks following this one. That'll be the latter half of this two-game homestand. At the four, it's Gasol with Noah at the five. Butler team to Dunleavy on the perimeter. And it's Rose in at the point guard. And that's the group for Fred Hoiberg as we begin the second half. Paul Gasol was the number three pick back in 2001. He managed to average 18 and 9 his first season, was rookie of the year, became a perennial all star. There's no way his younger brother, Mark, who was a second round pick, could ever match up to that, right? Not so fast, people. Mark's pretty good, too. That free throw good from Gasol. So many people overlooked Pau Gasol prior to last season seem to think that Clark, he was past his prime. Well, he was a starter in the All-Star game and a huge reason the Bulls played as well as they did. It was a big season for him. A lot of GM shaking their head for not going harder after him. So Chicago going with an almost entirely new group here. Taj Gibson's checked in for Noah. Heritage comes in for Pau Gasol. Brooks checked in for Dunleavy. And Freak subbed in for Derrick Rose. Houston with a big group substitution here. Jones checked in for Monte Yunus. Brewer comes in for Trevor Ariza. Marcus Thornton, he's checked in for James Harden. And it's Patrick Beverly in for Ty Lawson. You know, and, and with how the saw, it was weird to think that the Lakers were just so ready to let him go and move on. Where's the box out? Some easy second chance opportunities there. Those kinds of mistakes drive me crazy and will absolutely derail a team's chance to win. Gibson dishes to Freak. The feed to Miritic. Brewer with the steal. Kicks to Beverly. And here's Thornton outside. It's deflected. Oh, and a fast break for the Bulls. On up the court. Shots good by Butler. Let's look at the energy stats, how the hustle game has been going for Chicago. You know, block shots, guys, a clear indicator on the stat sheet of their excellent defense. I mean, leaving them no room to get off any shots. Yeah, but they've been offensive defensively tonight because they've really forced the issue on D and come up with quite a few steals and deflections. And with the skill set that Powell has and, and the year he had, there's no telling how long he can play at a high level. Again, one of those guys that never been reliant on the athletic ability to have an impact. 
Guys, what a back and forth game this has been. You know what? You're right. Neither side has been able to hang on to the lead for any kind of time at all. And that's already resulted in seven lead changes. Here's Jones. It counts. And the foul. It's going to go on Nikola Mirotic. Yeah, how about that one? Able to maintain control and finish the play. Yeah, we call that playing through the whistle. You know, he didn't give up on it when he heard the whistle. He kept his focus, his concentration, and he found a way to get the shot up and down. Tony Snell's checked in for Jimmy Butler. They set the pick. Brooks, the pass to Mirotic. That drops, and it comes off an assist from Brooks. And it's seven points for Nikola Mirotic. Houston's gotten off to a very slow start from three-point range in the second half. They're 0 for 4. From 10 feet out. And Beverly kicks to Jones. Miritich grabs the miss. Miritich has got his third rebound tonight. Gibson setting a pick for Brooks. Right wing, 17-foot shot on the way. And he connects with the jumper. And it's a three-point Chicago lead. In by Jones. Nice job coming off that screen. Beverly's got five points in the quarter. Very well executed pick to give him all kinds of space to get that one off. Freak kicks to Miritich. On the wing, Brooks. Freak sets a screen for Brooks. Off the screen. It's rebounded by Houston. Howard's got six rebounds now in the game. They have a two-for-one situation if they go quick. Yeah, I don't think they have to rush, though, Greg. Just need to find a good shot this time. And the basket by Brewer. And there's a pattern starting to take shape here. They're working it inside and getting good shots from close range. Well, I agree with you. Four of their last five baskets have been exactly of that variety. Freak dishes to Miritich. Gibson setting the pick for Brooks to the inside. Fires for three. Oh, and he just knocked down the buzzer, Peter. Oh, what a monster shot to close out the third. They've taken the lead going into the final quarter. battle fourth quarter should be good here's Lawson Gibson's checked in for the Bulls Freak comes in for Rose Corey Brewer's checked in for Houston Patrick Beverly comes in for Trevor Ariza and so in the game for the Rockets Brewer is out there with Howard then it's Harden then it's Patrick Beverly and it's Lawson in at the point pass to Beverly It's Freak with the rebound. Freak's got three rebounds so far in the game. Gibson the screen. Freak sets a screen for Butler. To the paint. The ball. That's ball. good. The Houston Leaders cut down now to just two points with that basket from Gibson. Wow. Huge shot. Listen to this crowd. That sounds like a rock concert in here. And guys, that was the bucket they have been waiting for. A moment to check in with Doris Burke. Doris? over that last break I listened to Kevin McHale address his team he told them the game is right there for the take fellas but we've got to be first first to lose balls first to the rim we have to give our all right here Kevin now's the time Howard the pass to a reason Howard with a screen on Noah in the corner Harden uncovered and good he nails it Harden's got 13 points here in the second half alone and he's showing signs now of life after going scoreless through the half. Inside, Noah sinks it. And he has brought them to within two points. And Joe Kim Noah is allowed to heat up. This is what you get. 50 seconds left to play here in the fourth. We can probably expect to see him slow it down now. Yeah, you got the lead. Burn some clock here. Smart move. Yeah. This is exactly what happens when you allow James Harden to heat up. Now the Bulls with it. Now 
freak. Dishes it to Butler. We've got 28 seconds left in the game. Not sure what, what the D was doing there. Clearly a breakdown. You can ill afford to give a guy like him that good a look. Twenty-three seconds left in the fourth quarter of this one, and now we've got the intentional foul. Yeah, you, you have to do that, though. You can't just let them dribble the game out. Exactly. I mean, you got to stop the clock any way possible and hope they alligator arm a few of those free throws. The job well done at the line on that possession. They'll make things a little easier on themselves if they can convert those.